Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Slight change of format today. Uh, this is a watch review, and we will be looking hands-on perspective in just a moment, but I really wanted to give my face-to-face, -face, I guess you could say, uh, reaction, because this has been the most difficult watch review. Um, I'm very, very divided about this piece, and I know generally I'm usually very positive, and that's because I... I, I select the watches that I think I'm going to be interested in or, or that you guys are going to be interested in. However, I was sent this watch in by or lent this watch by the company. And it's a company that, that uh, I, I really do um, love and admire because I've used or I've been a consumer of their products for many, many years. So it's very, it's very difficult. But my journalistic integrity and being as independent and unbiased as I can is hugely important to me. It's one of the fundamental core values, you could say, of the channel. Reporting on watches, I have to be as honest as possible. I feel it is my duty to you guys. Um, so let's change perspectives, have a, a, an overview of the, 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 the watch itself, then we'll come back and I'll discuss positives and negatives. And I almost forgot, quick wristwatch check, although in the in the hands-on uh, segment, I'm wearing a completely different <laughs> different watch. Uh, hashtag watch slut. I think that's the new phrase. I went to the bank yesterday, got my GMT, my Pepsi, out of the bank, and I'm enjoying it on a Juby. The Jubilee. The, the Juby. Uh, Jubilee bracelet. Anyway, yeah, let's change perspective, uh, and uh, we'll come back, summarize the watch. Today, we are reviewing a really cool and very affordable uh, Pilot's watch. And this is an automatic timepiece. It's a brand that actually is not a stranger to the channel at all. And it's probably appeared in um, more videos than any other watch brand. And that's because, uh, well, you're probably wondering, hang on, hang on a minute, TGV. Uh, I've never seen you wear this watch. Well, I've enjoyed their clocks uh, hanging on my wall. You would have seen them in the war room um, hundreds of times. Uh, Trintec Industries are from Canada and, and Trintec's products are predominantly made in Canada. Now before I uh, rabbit on far too much and forget completely to do wristwatch check, let's just get it out of the way. And yes, is it any surprise, I'm wearing the Panther Cub. Uh, I think that's the best name you guys have come up with. Uh, there, there was some fantastic suggestions. Thank you to everybody for commenting. Yeah, I'm still in my honeymoon period. I'm not going to bang on about it because you know my uh, my special love affair with the with the humble SKX. A little bit of background on Trintec. Well, they were founded in 1984. And they're a manufacturer of um, predominantly aviation-inspired clocks and now watches. Trintec were actually the first company to produce and sell aviation-inspired watches, which featured um, design elements of an aircraft altimeter. So um, even though they, they, they haven't been around that long, they, they're still, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're making a way for themselves. The original altimeter watch was produced in 1990. And over the years, the company has expanded from being primarily aviation focused and they've developed and it really exploded into fantastic products. Um, guys, have a look at their website. I absolutely adore, well, you guys know I'm a big fan of their clocks. I bought two of them. They do probably the best aviation inspired swag available everything from bags to caps to key rings to and it's all officially licensed products uh, their array of customers is extremely impressive indeed uh, just to name a few national geographic the boeing company united airlines air canada pbs uh, De Havilland, of course, which we're, we're featuring one of the <laughs> that De Havilland um, planes right there. Um, actually, that was a complete coincidence. American Airlines, Airbus, uh, Bombardier, Learjet, Falcon Aviation, ISAOA, Lockheed Martin, uh, oh God, British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, the list is endless. So they really have made products for the cream of the crop. Uh, when it comes to aviation, and they've they've taken this expertise into watches. So this handsome beast here is the Zulu Zero One Co-Pilot. Uh, it's in stainless steel with PVD coating, 
and it comes on a rubber strap. Um, so let's just get the uh, basic, oh, sorry, I do apologize, there's some dirt on my uh, calipers. Let's get the, uh, sorry, I need to zero that. Let's get the basic dimensions out of the way. We have a diameter of 42 millimeters. We have a height of 14.5. Lug to lug is 52 millimeters. And then we have the lug width of 22. So it is a big piece. It's not ginormous. Uh, this is actually the smallest piece they, they make. Um, however, you guys know, and I've said this a million times, aviation pieces and divers should be a little bit larger because of obviously to assist um, legibility. Undoubtedly, the inspiration of this particular look comes from uh, the dials you see in a cockpit. The PVD uh, coating is done extremely well. I mean, um, you know, any little marks are just smudges from when I was handling this earlier. The PVD finish is entirely sandblasted. There are no high polished areas to this watch whatsoever. We have crown guards, which is quite interesting. The shape, uh, it has a wonderful curve, the way the lugs angled, well, don't, don't angle, they, they, they have this very nice rounded um, edge that um, points downwards. If you notice there, we also have actual screws for the spring bars, which is fantastic. Um, and they are, they are real screws. There's, there's, there's no, you know, pretense here. So it, it gives off this incredible utilitarian, you know, unabashed tool aesthetic. We have a timing bezel, which is 120 click. The bezel is unidirectional. It is also PVD coated uh, stainless steel, as is the entire watch. There's a tiny bit of wiggle there. Uh, however, it's, it's you know, perfectly usable. And the sound is a little bit tinny, although you can't really criticize it for how it sounds. Uh, we have a coin edge, which is very easy to grip. And then the actual numerals, which are uh, engraved, are filled with extremely crisp white paint. The markings are very exaggerated, as is the markings on the dial. The dial itself is matte, and then we have these massive, exaggerated, bordering on futurist um, in style, in the, the style of the font. And again, very exaggerated, high contrast white um, to give that instant, instant legibility. The crystal is a flat sapphire that has anti-reflective coating, uh, which is quite surprising at this price range. Water resistance is 200 meters. We also get a screw down crown, which is fantastic. So you could, in theory, use it as a diver. And as a diver, it, it would be, you know, it'd be very, very efficient and, 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 and you know, it'd serve the task perfectly. The hands is probably my favorite feature. They're a hybrid of kind of syringe tipped with, you know, classic aviation sword, but they're skeletonized. If you see the second hand, which has this really lovely neon orange tip, the balance is also skeletonized, kind of to match perfectly. I love that. It's, 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 you, at first you don't notice it because it's blacked out towards the center, but it's a lovely little touch. Now the hands are also loomed. We have lumen over, very easy to distinguish and orientate yourself. We have a date at the 430 position with a white uh, date wheel. I love the 12, 3, 6 and 9 markings. It really gives it that, that tool-tastic kind of balanced look. The only thing that I feel is slightly off-putting is the uh, the date window. I wish they had have put that in in a black, because um, I think it, it just offsets the, the the line of symmetry slightly. But I mean, you know, it's 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 not the end of the world. So let's discuss the movement inside. Well, it comes as no surprise. We have the Seiko NH thirty five A, which is one of the world's uh, most popular automatic movements and used hugely, especially by the micro brands, which of course Trintec uh, falls under that category. It does have hacking and manual wind. It operates at 21,600 vibrations an hour. 
It has deer shock, uh, 41 hour power reserve, bi-directional winding, 24 joules. Out of the factory, we're looking at minus 20 to plus 40, although I can you know, proudly report this is operating about uh, plus seven, plus eight uh, every 24 hours, which is a solid and quite admirable performance, um, especially at this price range. So we have the trusted reliability and uh, rock solid robustness of Seiko. And I think, you know, you couldn't beat it. Uh, it's the perfect choice at this uh, price range. On the back, we have a screw down case back, which is in a uh, satinato or satinized finish. Just basic information, nothing too flamboyant or intricate. Stylistically, it's quite an interesting design. I, I, I think it stands on its own. Its dial layout really reminds me of the Zin 556. To a certain extent, with the, the timing bezel, also reminds me of the 857. But of course, a lot more affordable. There is some of that Bell and Ross look to it as well, uh, specifically the BR0192, which is quite iconic in its own right. I feel that Trintec, uh, there's enough of individuality that here, uh, there's enough little quirks uh, to set it apart. Um, so it's it's very much its own thing, which I really respect. So let's pop it on the wrist and see how this bad boy wears. Well, there we go. Now, I have to say, for me, it's far too large. It's um, obviously far too large. You guys know I have very small wrists, uh, six and a quarter inches. However, it is very comfortable and it does have an extremely good presence. The rubber strap, unfortunately, is not of the highest quality. You can see the lint from the gloves is attracting to it. It also is far too large. I've got, um, you know, excess strap there. So it's definitely a watch for the larger wrist. Its weight is about 120 grams, which is very nice and light. Uh, it feels extremely solid, I have to say that. Uh, far too big for me, but you know, uh, then again, I think for the masses, this size will be a pleaser. So let's summarize the watch. Let's start with the positives first. Well, undoubtedly the design uh, is spot on. Uh, functionality wise, what it's designed to do as a pilot's watch is fantastic. It has its own little quirks, characteristics that set it apart. It's, you know, not a homage of anything. And you can definitely tell it has been designed by somebody that knows aviation watches. And I, I think that highlights one of the best positives of this watch. And that is the legacy of Trintec has kind of seeped into this watch. Many brands, micro brands, do not have the level of authenticity that Trintec bring because Trintec have worked with, you know, the, the, the best of the best when it comes to avionics and, and, and aerospace. The list is endless. So I really do think it legitimizes them some degree and it gives them a head start compared to, um, you know, a lot of micro brands that simply don't have any of this uh, behind their name and their brand. So that's a very, very strong thing. I love its tactical, no-nonsense look. It's also quite rock solid. You've got the robust reliability and affordable, uh, serviceable Seiko in there. The construction generally is, is, is tough. There's a the, the few exceptions, we'll get into that in a moment. I also think it's priced very fairly for you know, under $400, you're getting premium quality materials like the Sapphire um, and sets it apart from the obvious competitors uh, of the big boys like Seiko, Citizen, etc. Uh, and it is a tough, tough market, but I do think you get your money's worth here. $400 is a price that a lot of people, most people are interested in. Um, so I think it's great that, that Trintec are bringing their expertise to this um, price bracket. So the negatives, well, first of all, I, I popped it onto a NATO strap immediately. I know I always do that, but for very good reason, the rubber strap is horrendous. Um, and you can usually tell that the quality of the rubber is not very good because if you've seen my videos on um, straps, a lot of the rubber straps I tend to look at, like the Bonetto Cinturini, a few other brands, I forget, but 
They use high quality rubber and you can tell because it doesn't attract lint um, and, and, and dust and bits of, you know, um, kind of uh, little um, hairs and things from your clothes, that kind of thing. This is like a magnet and it was just, uh, you know, also it's very clumsy and a little bit too big. Um, so I took it off. Horrible strap. Very sorry, but yeah, not a very nice strap at all. And I understand that, you know, at $400, you can't have everything. So slightly forgivable there. However, there were QC issues, and this is my biggest negative of the watch. If you look at the second hand, on the balance of the second hand, there was a little bit of orange paint, a little fragment just sticking up, and it just ruined it for me. It's a real shame. And also the blacked out section of that hand wasn't entirely painted correctly. Very difficult to see with the naked eye, but it, once I saw it, you guys can't be unseen. And I'm sure from my experiences with their fantastic, affordable timepieces, their quality, especially their, their made in Canada stuff, as these clocks are. Sorry, did I call them watches? Clocks. The standard of these is very high. It's, um, these are impeccably well made considering their price. QC affects all watch brands. I've bought brand new um, Breitlings, brand new Rolexes uh, sometimes have problems. Nobody is invincible to QC. And I'm sure uh, um, Trintec would replace the watch. They have very good customer care. However, I have to report these little things because, um, well, um, I have to be blunt. I have to be, it's, it's my duty to you guys. Also, the screw heads on the, uh, on the, on the lugs, while I, I do like that approach, it's certainly more secure than your typical uh, spring bars. Unfortunately, being PVD, when I replace the, the um, I put the, the Zulu, actually it's not a NATO strap, it's a Zulu. The screw head had already, stripped off a little bit of the PVD. And that's the downfall of PVD. Um, it's quite tough. You know, I've already bashed this watch about a bit and it hasn't scuffed up the actual case. However, on the screw heads, it's not a practical place, you know. I would have preferred just spring bars, maybe drilled lug holes in this case. Lastly, the size. I know you guys are probably sick of me complaining about watches are too big. Um, had this had a slightly smaller lug width, I, I feel it would have worn like a 42. It wears like a 44 because the lug width is so wide um, and that can dramatically change how a watch behaves once on the wrist. I also feel it could have been a smidgen thinner. Uh, there's no need for it to be as chunky. That particular movement is not the, the thickest in the world. And I would have loved to see a 40 mil version, even 38, but I know that's pushing it for a lot of you guys. But a 40 mil would have been spot on. Anyway, so that is my positives and negatives. And it's a real shame because I feel a bit of a missed opportunity. This could have been the best aviation automatic watch under $400. It has its own distinct style. Um, it's very much its own thing, but let down by the quality. And it's tricky because I know it's, it's a really tough a competitive price range because you, you, you're dealing with the, the giants, uh, pretty much Seiko, Orient, uh, Citizen, and their ability to, to, to put out in vast numbers affordable, um, quality made timepieces. Sure, you can get QC issues with them just as much, but it's a tough, it's a really, really tough market. I'm going to leave it there. Let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.